I'm going to put some dirt in your eye. Hey guys, what's up? It is the Culture Detective here investigating your favorite movies. I have made it to the USA and right now I am somewhere in the Washington state. I will not tell you where to be exact because I'm not going to dox myself, but um, yes, here I am. Um, I don't have my phone stand, so I can't film myself with both hands. And also, there's someone else in this house right now, so I gotta keep it down. But, for the first time in my life, I have watched a movie in the cinema outside of Hong Kong. Again, not showing the location. Spider-Man No Way Home. So, I finally watched Spider-Man No Way Home, and I've been avoiding the internet for Spider-Man spoilers for a long time now, even though I have already accidentally seen enough spoilers, so, you know, a lot of this movie didn't really shock me or anything. Plus, even if I had not seen the spoilery spoilers, at least I have seen the pics, the leaks. You know what I'm talking about. Yes, surprise ruined. Uh, it sucks. But um, anyways, I'm still really happy that I'm able to um, watch my first movie in a cinema for the first time outside of my home, Hong Kong. Um, aside from the god-awful movie poster, this movie is um, actually quite good. I actually enjoy it. Now, if you've been watching my YouTube channel for a long time, you know that prior to 2019, I used to be quite a fan of Marvel movies. I mean, for for a long time, I never really cared for Marvel movies until I started watching them on my own uh, with um, Captain America Civil War and Black Panther and uh, friggin' Infinity War and Endgame. But ever since Endgame and Phase 4, I started to have higher standards in Marvel movies and movies in general. So ever since Phase 4 has begun with the TV shows, with uh, Shang-Chi and Black Widow, none of those movies wowed me. For, for me, the new Marvel movies are just mediocre at best, with the exception of Loki, which is a TV show which I actually really, really enjoy. But, but, good news, because Spider-Man No Way Home, I actually enjoy. Oh, also, I, I haven't watched Eternals, because I couldn't care less about Eternals. So, you know what, just go away. But anyways, Spider-Man No Way Home is the third installment to the Marvel, uh, the new Disney Marvel uh, Spider-Man trilogy. Maybe there's going to be a fourth one, I don't know. But um, Spider-Man No Way Home, here it is, and it is awesome. First of all, on a technical standpoint, I think this movie is so much more exciting and um, enthralling than the previous two Spider-Man movies under Disney. I think the cinematography and the music is so much more improved, especially for the cinematography. I think um, it's more colorful. There are a lot of more fun shots here, which I never thought I would say for a Marvel movie, so that's saying a lot. Second of all, the music is fine. I mean, of course, in the second half of the movie, the music is just kind of so-so, but in the first half, especially the first scene, I thought was really fun. Like, it started off with some really serious voiceover, and then it becomes this, like, steady cam mounted on Spider-Man, and we just see, like, Spider-Man and Zendaya just flying around the city and, and with this really fun sort of this hand drum music like that was a really fun movie opening I actually really enjoy it and overall the movie is so much more exciting and playful and I just really really love that and obviously this Marvel movie also shares a lot of common things that other Marvel movies share that I dislike like there are a lot of cringy moments uh, there is a scene where one of the characters are about to die and before the character dies the character says something and it feels really forced and it's really generic there's a lot of small talk scenes that i find a little stupid but aside from that um this movie is really quite good i mean i actually enjoy a bulk of the movie so um spoiler alert spoiler alert it's impossible to talk about this movie without talking about the spoiler so spoiler alert in three two ones skip to the end if you want to avoid the spoilers but obviously you can't avoid them anymore so first of all all the marvel spider-man villains have returned 
that are previously on screen, all of them have returned, aside from the Rhino, I guess, like the Green Goblin has returned, Doc Ock from Spider-Man 2 has returned, Venom has technically returned, but in the post credit scene. And, and, and it's not the original villain, it is the Tom Hardy's Venom. And then uh, we have the Andrew Garfield era Spider-Man villains. Of course, we have Electro, played by Jamie Foxx. And then we have uh, Sandman is from Tobey Maguire. We have the Lizard Guy as well. And um, yeah, and obviously halfway through the movie, actually before Act 3, Andrew Garfield and Tobey Maguire show up, which is absolutely amazing. If only I hadn't seen the leaked pics I would have been super shocked, but even having those picks leaked, even knowing that these two people are going to show up, I'm still super excited that they showed up, and I was really elated when they showed up. It was awesome, and there's a lot of fan service. Not gonna lie, there's a lot of fan service, and usually fan service is lame. Usually nostalgia baiting is lame, but this time it actually works because as someone who grew up in the late 2000s and early 2010s, seeing Tobey Maguire Spider-Man come back is amazing. It is absolutely amazing. And even though I didn't really watch the Andrew Garfield ones because I didn't care for it, um, I, I still think this is a really epic moment. Second of all, I think uh, nostalgia baiting works in this movie because, because Andrew Garfield and Tobey Maguire actually have something to do in this movie. They didn't just show up and leave they actually have something to do, which is really fun. It's fun seeing all three of them fight in the final fight scene. It is very freaking epic and I love it. Uh, also, Andrew Garfield as Spider-Man is actually really good, really underrated. I really like his charisma. Of course, Tobey Maguire is classic. He is iconic and uh, Willem Dafoe steals every single scene. He is amazing he is absolutely amazing alfred molina is great and this movie treats both of these actors with a lot of respect because this movie is aware that we treat these two actors with a lot of respect especially as these two villains jamie fox as electro is so much better here and another an, another concern i have for this movie before i went into it is how is this movie going to deal with the fact that Tobey Maguire Spider-Man and Andrew Garfield Spider-Man are and and the new Spider-Man are three different franchises. They they don't match tonally, stylistically, they do not match at all. But this movie deals with these m mismatches really really well by fully embracing it. Like there's a scene when uh there are multiple scenes when this movie sort of makes fun of the campiness of the Tobey Maguire franchise and this movie also revamps Andrew Garfield's and, and Jamie Foxx's characters and make them more palatable for the new fun Disney style. So that's really cool. And um, overall, I enjoy this movie. Everybody did a great job. Zendaya as MJ, Jacob Bata Batalon, hopefully I'm not mispronouncing it, as Ned is amazing. Um, Freaking uh, Benedict Cumberbatch, everyone else is fantastic. And um, I enjoy it. I am uh, giving Spider-Man No Way Home strong 8 out of 10. So, have you watched Spider-Man No Way Home from 1 to 10? I'm going to just rate it, like, it, like it, and subscribe if you want more. And thanks for watching. Also, after watching Spider-Man No Way Home in the cinema, nearby there is a Barnes & Noble bookstore. And obviously, you and I both know what's in the bookstore. It's not books. It's Criterion Blu-rays. So, uh, here are some extra clips. Yo, there it is. Hidden plain sight. Yo. Oh my god. Oh damn. Oh shit. Oh my god. Shit. Oh my god. Oh. Oh yes. Oh yes. Oh shit. Oh shit. Oh, oh, oh yes. Oh yes. Oh, god damn it, this is real. Oh, oh, 
4K Mulholland Drive. <laughs>